Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look, look at in this video is taking control of DNS. So in the last video, we locked down all the ports except for DNS, HTTP, which is port 80, and HTTPS, which is port 443. But a lot of people said, well, what about DNS? So DNS is a little bit... Uh, well, DNS is important, right? So for those of you that don't know what DNS is, DNS is like the yellow pages for the internet, right? So we can, um, don't have to remember IP addresses, but even then there's a really important thing called host headers, right? And DNS allows us to properly host multiple domains from a single IP address using host headers. So DNS, super duper important uh even internally if you're running active directory or however your directory services are set up dns uh very very important so what we're going to look at in this video is a few ways now this is definitely not a comprehensive list but a few ways to take control of your uh, your dns so what we've got is we've got my udr and one thing i want to talk about is uh content filtering that's one of the biggest things that we control DNS for, uh, either at home or in the, the corporate environment. Now, the UDR, the UDM, the UDM Pro, the UDM SE, the Unified Dreamwall, they all do have a level of content filtering that is available. They do have some, some rules we're going to look at here in a second. But this site, cleanbrowsing.org, they have some free... Uh, DNS servers that you can use. So you can see here they've got a family filter which blocks access to all adult pornographic and explicit sites and it also blocks proxy and VPNs, right? So that's one of the things about when you're locking down your traffic, do you allow VPNs and proxies? Then they have just the adult filter um, and then they have the security filter. So uh, that this one just blocks phishing, spam, malware, malicious domains. Very important. And if you use a commercial service like uh, Cisco Umbrella or DNS Filter, then you're going to get you know this kind of uh, granular level. And at the towards the end of this, I'm going to show you another way to accomplish this without using one of these services. Now you could also use a pie hole. You could use uh, AdGuard, you know, all of those things. So you can take what I'm going to show you and mix it and match it and, and kind of figure it out. But what we're going to do real quick is we're going to hop over to the UDR. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are um, going to go to traffic management and we're going to create a rule because we also don't want uh, HTTPS over or DNS over HTTPS uh, to work. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to block an app. And we're going to block DNS. And then we're going to block DNS over TLS. And our target here is going to be all devices. And schedule is going to be always. And this is blocking apps. All right. So that's the first step. Now, what you're going to notice is when I open this command prompt, um, even after the UDR is ready, if I do an NS lookup on google.com and I go to 1.1.1.1, uh, it is still going directly out to the internet to 1.1.1 because I specify that, right? So if you do an NS lookup, the domain name, and then you specify the DNS server, um, it's, it's still going out. And no matter how long we wait, it is still going to just go back out and work because we haven't blocked it really at the firewall level. We're doing it at a different level, kind of blocking apps with, with this. Now, I will also tell you real quick that if you have the ad blocking enabled, um, this is not going to work. So if you're using the built-in ad blocking, and I've, I've reported this uh, to Ubiquity, if you use the, the built-in ad blocking, this is not going to work at all. All right, so the next thing that we are going to do is we've got our firewall rules from our last video, but what we're going to do is we're going to modify those, right? So what we're going to do is on this accept, we're going to come in here and we're going to change. Uh, you can see I've already started changing the port group, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to our port group and we're going to remove 
DNS. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another group just called DNS. And we're going to add 53 to that. We're going to apply the changes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our firewall. We're going to create a new... Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this to allow HTTP, HTTPS, because that's that rule. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to change this rule, block all non-HTTPS, but then I'm going to explicitly block DNS. So I'm going to come in here. It's going to be an internet out rule block DNS. It's going to be before our predefined rules, any, and it's going to be port group DNS. And we're going to apply the changes. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag. Oops, I am going to drag that rule all the way to the top. And we're going to wait a couple seconds so that our UDR can uh, catch up. But now, uh, if you see, if I go do an nslookup google.com and you try to go out to 1.1.1.1, it's being blocked. That traffic is no longer being allowed out. So if I get rid of google.com, now you can see that the server is unify.willyhow.net, which is the uh, UDR, and it returns it. So the UDR is now sitting in the middle and it is doing these requests. Now, this is where you can do, uh, if you had a pie hole, you could hand out the, that is the DNS server and you could create an allow rule that allows the pie hole to get out. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we, uh, how this is working right now is it's using the DHCP DNS servers that my UDR is getting from my ISP. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up this family filter. Now you can also sign up for this and make this granular, but uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to override my ISPs. Um, we're going to override my ISPs DNS servers so that we block uh, pornographic and explicit sites. So let's see how this is going to work. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to copy this, which is the first DNS server. Now this is free. Anybody can use this, this portion of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Internet and I'm going to go in here. And I am going to uncheck this auto DNS server. And I'm going to put a primary. And I'm going to put a secondary in. And I'm going to apply those changes. And now what's going to happen is once the UDR uh, is done getting ready, still answering. Is it ready yet? It's ready, right? So here's the theory. So we're going to test this out. We're going to try to open a pornographic site and see if it gets blocked. You'll notice I haven't done anything different with my client. We only changed it on the UDR. So hold on just a second. All right. So here we are at our uh, private browsing window and we're going to type in pornhub.com. It is blocked. We can't get there. Name not resolved. Um, let's try now going to Google. Google loads just fine. So uh, you can try any spicy site that you want. Let's see if we can get private internet access to load. Because they are supposed to block uh, VPNs. And there you go. I can't get private internet access to load either. So this filter is doing its job. So now we can't get to VPNs. Um, all the only outbound allowed ports that we have are 80 and 443. We've got all of these things running, all the content filtering and all this stuff. And so uh, we are in pretty darn good shape. This thing is locked down uh, pretty, pretty good from that standpoint. But let me show you one thing. Hold on just a second. So if you want a router that can do a lot of this, and has the granular access that you're looking for, check out the Synology line 
of routers. Uh, they're powerful. You can use them in line as a transparent filter. You don't have to use their Wi-Fi. You can do everything wired and you can achieve this type of security with this, with this device. Um, so you wouldn't have to necessarily use a third party service. Now you do have to recognize that there are limitations. Synology has built limitations into these devices, such as you can only do five VLANs, but in a home, who's really going to have more than five VLANs. Now, some homes, yes, will have many, many VLANs, but those are going to be edge cases, right? Uh, I still believe that as far as devices go uh, in this niche, in this uh, market segment, that Synology still has the best content filtering of all. So if you've got questions about this, let me know uh, down in the comments. And um, if you want to see how to further, you know, take this uh, a little, you know, even a little further, let me know, because then what we can do is we can actually set up logging and we can do all kinds of things, right? And you can be alerted when people are trying to access certain kinds of sites. Let me know if you're interested in that. Also, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and that you subscribe, comment, share, follow me on my social channels down below. If you want to support the channel, we do have affiliate links down below have to use those, but it does kick a couple bucks to the channel and is greatly appreciated along with our Patreon link. And if you want to set up your network like this, whether it's a small network, a home network, a business network, um, all the way up to enterprise, we do handle all those types of things. You can reach out at willyhow.com, click hire us or contact us, fill that information out and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.